The United States of America still does not want to accept Black African Americans as whole human beings who are citizens. We need to be America, we need to be Americans, and we need to come together as America if we're going to survive in this world. Probably the slave trade from Africa has had the most lasting social impact in America. And so this bill says you must acknowledge that this did happen. This was intended to be a day of remorse and regret and, and um, self-flagellation and, and we're terrible as a country. I don't think that's healthy. And we can't just wear our positive glasses on all the time because there still is racism and there's still inequality and there's still discrimination. We want to move forward whole as being inclusive as we said we're the melting pot of America. Well, let's, this is the time to see if the melting pot is true. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Throughout the 2021 legislative session, students at Meridian High School involved with TVW's Capital Classroom Program worked repeatedly with a volunteer lobbyist to advocate for the passage of House Bill 1016, a bill that would make June 19th an official state holiday in the recognition of the end of slavery. So they all watched the floor debate stuff with Representative Morgan and Sutherland. And That's great. In the weeks leading up to the final vote in the Senate, they discussed the merits of the bill with the prime sponsor, Representative Melanie Morgan of South Tacoma. Um, right, so, so Representative Morgan, will be joining us. I'll introduce her, let her speak, and then you guys can, can go ahead and ask questions. Afterwards, they were visited with their own senator, Doug Erickson of the 42nd District, who challenged them with another perspective on the issue. Civil discourse and thoughtful discussion is at the heart of the Capital Classroom Program, and we are delighted to bring you their conversations here. Hi, good afternoon, Representative Morgan. Afternoon. Hi, I'm Veronica Vance Lake. I work with Carrie Tolufson and, and I work with uh, this amazing group of seniors um, awesome. who are, are the Capital Classroom Connection group. Um, and thank you so much for uh, sharing your time. We know you're extremely busy right now. And so um, I don't want to spend too much um, of your time with introductions. I think we'll just hop right in because our students have chosen to follow um, your legislation that you've proposed on making Juneteenth a holiday. And um, they have some questions and we just want to chat with you. Okay. You'd like me to introduce myself? Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank yeah. you. So my name is Representative Melanie Morgan. I represent the 29th Legislative District and that's in Pierce County, Tacoma and parts of Lakewood and more unincorporated Pierce County, closer to Thurston County. And I am never too busy for students. So I'm so pleased to be here to share my work because um, as I've always said, my work is really not for me. Um, I'm in my mid fifties. And so I'm living out legislation that was created 20 years ago in my life. So the legislation that I create today is actually for uh, young students moving forward to when you come to the legislature to take my place. So with that, I'm glad to be here and I will turn it over to uh, whoever's running the classroom. Yeah. Um, hi, Representative Morgan. My name is Steve Lawrence. I'm the teacher here at, at uh, Meridian High School. We're up in Bellingham and we, um, yeah, we chose this bill to, to follow. We've sent letters to our um, our local representatives and um, we're now set to send them to our Senator who I think is gonna be in opposition to the bill. So I'd love to see which, uh, what you would have to say to uh, Senator Erickson uh, in our hopes to try to sway him. <laughs> and then I don't know if students have questions. They all, we all watched your, your very passionate uh, speech from the floor um, and support. Very impressive. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Did you want me to answer that? Was that a question that you wanted yeah, me to start sure. with? If you, if you got a, if you when have you have one. opposition, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, mm -hmm. That's the nature of the job, right? That uh, and that's in any space that you go into, whether you're playing on a sports team, or you are debating something uh, for your class, or 
it's a cook-off, right? Uh, there's always an opposition. And so you have to go into whatever you do with that there. The point is to um, have a contingency plan on what that looks like in uh, putting that in the plan of moving the bill forward. Um, we always know we have some opposition and that's okay. Just as long as I have the majority that's not, <laughs> then it, that makes it pretty safe. And that's the key right now, the Democrats are in the majority. And so as I try to work bipartisan, to have a bipartisan vote on it, and I think it did. It came through very strong with 89 out of the 98 members who voted for the bill. So that's exciting. This gets termed, now we get to term this as a bipartisan bill. So when we do have uh, some opponents, um, we try to work with them. We try to find out what their oppositions are and see if we could strike up a, a, a compromise somewhere along the line. And that typically comes through amendments. So with Senator Erickson is um, to ask him why he opposes it. Um, is it history? Um, is it cost? Uh, we have to find out. We don't know what the opposition is at this point. That's true. Students, anybody have a question you would like to pretty go for it, Jonathan? Uh, so something I've been kind of curious about as we've been talking about this bill is like, what kind of input there's been like from the black community as to what they would want to see come out of this bill like if they want like an education thing in schools or just whatever kinds of things you have to say right thanks jonathan that's a great question it's it's really you're now talking about what inspired me to run the bill and it's history that all of us in our black african-american communities um whether we know the, the history in terms of textbook history, but we have uh, experienced it in our communities. And the main thing is we need to be recognized. Um, we uh, were ca captured as you read, uh, saw my speech and brought to these lands um, as slaves. And so, and we weren't considered human beings. And I don't know about all of you, but last night I watched Amend about the uh, 14th Amendment. And that is, that, that's a crucial point right there too, about we are saying that we want to be acknowledged as human beings, one, and two, as citizens. So um, it, it, the inspiration just on that alone <laughs> would say that I want to continue to ensure that um, Black African Americans, especially with the atrocities that they have had to endure, that they have some pathway to reconciliation, to healing, right? But not, not just healing within our own community, but bringing the whole state of Washington along with us as we do with other atrocities that we have experienced in, uh, in our state, even with uh, the Japanese internment camp. So um, that's where we're trying to just head is just acknowledgement and let's be real about African-American history. And so uh, even during my school days, we didn't get the full picture. And I'm in my mid fifties and now I'm getting the full picture. And my, I wanna do my due diligence with uh, young folks to ensure that you're starting off with the correct information, um, with the correct history so that when you come over, um, move into the adult world that you can make meaningful and thoughtful uh, uh, decisions. Has there been a, a talk of, of trying to um, actually, like Jonathan said, like create some school curriculum around it? Do you know? Uh, thank you for that follow-up uh, question. So um, I don't know if we actually stipulate that in the bill, but this is an ongoing um, equity project, right? So uh, we have to be sure that we're not trying to monolith anything as well, right? one bill cannot solve everything. We would love it to, because then, you know, then I could just do this one day and then I'm done, <laughs> right? But the reality is we have to keep chipping away at uh, dismantling racism in our system. And so this bill, for me, it starts setting the tone. It starts uh, building the, the, the foundation of, okay, this country did practice something atrocious. Um, we no longer practice that. 
And so now let's celebrate that we don't practice that. And let's celebrate as all colors together, like we do July 4th, that we no longer practice um, a slavery. And so there, I would love in the future, um, even with this classroom, as you've seen from my other legislation, I've worked with other uh, students, that we might wanna craft some legislation around uh, education of African-American studies, because that's where it comes, it's not just one item. It's a lot to talk about true things in African-American studies, so I'm open to that. We have some more, or any other, some other questions or comments? Uh... What about AJ? I've seen AJ over there being engaged. <laughs> what you got for me, AJ? I'll give you a question. Um, I guess like, you know, we can kind of see your reaction uh, from what Representative Sutherland had, had said to, to what, uh, to, as to your bill. Um, <sighs> But I mean, what what really were you thinking when he said everything he had said? Okay, so you guys have to remind me, right? It's been 10 days since I've had a day off. So <laughs> I must <laughs> remind me what the good gentleman said. <laughs> uh, I want to say it was along the lines of uh, saying that Juneteenth was like a celebration of Lincoln freeing the slaves, which it was not um obviously and uh saying that it would be better if uh the funds allocated towards like a, a juneteenth day would go towards something else i think that my clap back <laughs> at that <laughs> was more about the cost of this thing and that's where we get some opposition a lot of times and this is a good lesson for all of you when you're thinking of a good policy I'm learning as in my third session that possibly I should be leading with a fiscal note. How much does this actually cost? Everybody agrees on the policy pretty much, but it's how do you pay for it? And the people who would like to oppose the policy will use how much it costs to um, actually implement this. But so I think I was responding more with, we uh, have already decided that it, it, we, wouldn't, we would wait to bring this online fiscally until 2022, right? And I, I wanna take care of my people too that have suffered through this pandemic. And I'm with my Democrat caucus when I say we need to take care of them and make them whole and then bring this on. But we have to get the policy over the line and established before uh, we move on into that. So that's why it's important to get the policy in. And so what you witnessed was a debate. And that's what it was. I'm learning that too, my third session, right? That I'm thinking it's about giving this dynamic speech, but the reality is it's about a debate. So I hope that that's what you guys are practicing. It's this conversational dialogue, right? Through the speaker um, to put the answers back. I heard you say this, but it's actually this. Please don't misinterpret my words. So I hope that answers that. Yeah. I, I thought it was an interesting he, he went on this whole story of, you know, how great the Republican Party has been for, you know, African Americans and, you know, Lincoln freed the slaves and the Republicans pushed for all the civil rights legislation that, you know, didn't get passed, but, you know, that they were the ones introducing it all in the 40s and 50s and all that. And I don't know, it was just, it was a really interesting take. I was like, I just kind of look at him and say, yeah, and you're also the party that's embraced the Proud Boys. <laughs> and so, <laughs> like, you may have done something kind of okay in the past, but you also are not doing that now. <laughs> it was just a weird, well, I don't know. Th this is the thing, right? So um, this is my job. When we get on the floor, I have to, to li I can listen to the other side or not listen to the other side. And for me in protection, in the work that I do, because I come very strong and to the point, right? I can't listen to a lot of that chatter, right? So I, I, I will listen for key words in, in terms of tearing down my bill. He, the good gentleman has, and everybody has the uh, right 
to voice their opinions, right? And, and tell us what they feel. That's democracy. And so what you witnessed was true democracy. Um, we heard both sides. Now you have to choose at the end of the day and vote with your conscience on which side you feel that what your thought and thinking and your morals and values and how you see your world, your America, you vote accordingly. And so it's okay for me. It's okay that he can make statements and I get to respond back. And what we keep in mind, majority. Keep talking. We have the majority. We're giving you the opportunity to speak, but at the end of the day, we all push the yes button. That's the beauty of this politics game, right? Is being in the majority. I've never experienced being in the minority. I hope I never have to. But um, just to keep that in mind when you're listening to the debate on the floor, what is the end goal? So I don't have to do a whole bunch of talking because he can spin himself out and talk all he wants. I know what the outcome is. That's interesting. Do you like that? Like, I'm a politician, you... of course. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get in this game to come over here and blah, blah, blah. I came over here to fight for us. And fighting for us means you got to play strategically. You know, you try to build bridges, but if I, I can only extend the olive branch, right? It's up to the other person to take hold of it. Wow, that's super interesting. What is that making you think about, Jonathan or Nayla? Anybody else want to throw in some? Yeah, Nayla, that, I would love to hear from you. Uh, Nayla's thinking awesome. over there. I can see you thinking. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I just, I really loved your response. I think you gave a great view um, just on what the Black community went through. And um, I kind of want to, I kind of want to, I know you kind of went over it, but I have, this doesn't really have to go with the bill, but I kind of want to know what you like about your job. You know, what's your most favorite part? I know it's, you like fighting for the rights um, and just representing people, but just want to know what you like about your job overall. That's, that's, thank you for asking that. Um, it, it's a tough job. <laughs> and I have to say, this is my favorite. Speaking is my favorite. Um, getting people engaged and offering different options on how to look at things and how to view things. But more importantly, is that Black African Americans weren't always welcomed in this space, right? And other communities of color, as I'm the chair for the Member of Color Caucus, right? So we all, and we're 19 strong, so we're two-thirds of the caucus now. We always weren't in this space. We've been fighting, fighting, fighting. So for me, the, the delightfulness is, is that I get to be the convener, right? And bring the voices now, listening and, and saying, even for you students, that you should come and testify on bills. It's remote now, so it should be even easier to sign up. You can start being engaged now. If you, if you love this bill, making Juneteenth a, a state paid holiday, you can write the Senate and say, we want you to pass this bill because the voice of the youth is important. I know, I've known that, I have four children. I know that, they're all in their 20s and I'm, I'm developing those minds though. Why wouldn't I continue that practice, right? Of continuing to educate, continuing to open doors, continuing to bring back the information that they don't tell us. So this information you're hearing today, it's not something that's shared. How do you play this debate game on the floor? right? Even I didn't know it. You just get in there. And it's like, okay, I guess this is how you do it. I guess that worked, right? But now that I'm becoming more savvy, <laughs> I was like, oh, now I get a click, click, click. I'm going to be using this one next time. <laughs> so back to just, it's really about speaking and sharing and relationships uh, with the community. And uh, this last summer, I uh, started a youth, young adult think tank and so I hope that in this next summer when we resurrect that, that you guys would be a part of that. And that's about, it's just, I just wanna hear what you think. Just wanna, just wanna give you the space to tell um, a leader that can make some impact and changes about what do you wanna see for the future? You know, um, wh what does police accountability look like for you? 
you know, what does equity look up for you? It may not look the same as, as me as a, as a 53 year old. It may not look the same for 16, 17, 18 year old uh, people. I like that. Any others? I don't know how much time we have. Uh, what about all those ones hidden back there? I can still hear your voice if you unmute. <laughs> yeah, we got some Brenda and Tenley and Claire. We got some, you know, gals that are pretty sharp. What was your reaction, Brenda? Uh, she's not hearing me. Well, may I ask the classroom a question, Steve? Yeah. Uh, you guys have viewed uh, my speech on the floor and I'm sure that you've researched how a bill passes, et cetera. What would you offer to me as to um, strengthen the bill and um, ensuring that it passes? And then how is it rolled out? What do you see that looking like in terms of when June 19th actually comes? Be bashful. Yeah. Hey, Claire, are you there? Yeah. Um, could you handle the first part of this? She asked about, um, you know, ways in which you can, um, you know, help push the bill. You had some really interesting reactions to um, what Representative Morgan said in the speech. Um, you were, it sounded like you were kind of, you learned some things about the importance of this that you didn't really yeah. kind of think about before. Yeah, it was just um, that like in our generation, we haven't like firsthand uh, seen slavery enacted, but we've seen the effects of it. And that um, recognizing it has been really important, but also like how um, you defended the bill with the financial part. I thought that was really, um, really smart and that like the financial won't come in until the next year and that like representing and recognizing this holiday is more important than um, the one day of the financial, the 7 million instead of, is such a small part of the, the budget. Right, right. Yeah. That's great. And uh, my kids would probably side with you, but I wasn't around when slavery was in action either. So. <laughs> but my kids, they always tease me, aren't you older than what you really are? So that's hilarious. But yeah, so um, the other piece of the financial piece that I realized the other day when I heard the governor speaking in his press conference, when he announced that we have 7.6 million people that live in the state of Washington. Now, if we divide that by 7.5 million, that comes about roughly to be 98 cents per person to celebrate this holiday. So if, if, if when you're talking about fighting your opposition, you got to think of all the nitty gritty pieces, right? <laughs> and those are, I didn't have to pull that out, right, of my back pocket, but I have it there, just in case we need to go deeper. And if we need to go deeper, that's how you debate it. Like, well, what about this? <laughs> and then what about this? So um, uh, I hope I clarified uh, that. Yeah, that's really awesome and interesting, like what you have to like dive into and research to really defend your bill. It's really cool. And if you'll notice, uh, we didn't have to do too much debating on my bill as you saw the strong, the strong vote that came through, but you have bills out there that we, we have to, we spent six hours on, right? Like the environmental bill, we spent six hours debating that bill. And so um, that's because we have lots of amendments on them and each person gets to speak on the amendment. You have so many, and so many minutes you can speak. So 98 members. And so what I love is what we witness from the Democrat caucus is how all of us get on board with whoever is prime sponsoring the bill. So let's take House Bill 20, 1236 that um, for just cause evictions by Representative Macri. And I have a history in homelessness and being evicted as well. So I got to jump in on that fight, right? So, but all of us from the caucus, we had things to say, we were chiming in, chiming in. That's the, the, the beauty of being a team 
right? So yes, I may have sponsored the bill, but my caucus is behind me and saying, we're going to help you get that bill over the line because when we all vote yes, we all created the bill. Does that make sense? At the end of the day, yes, I may be the prime sponsor, but once we all vote on the bill, they also have to take responsibility. Hey, you voted on this bill. It's yours too. It's beautiful. Jonathan, you've been somebody who's spoken a lot about, or at least asked questions about what does this mean for, you know, black communities now? Like, you know, so we have a holiday. What, if you could, could you speak to this as far as what would you love to see happen as a result? Um, yeah, I mean, I think what you said about it kind of like setting the, like the tone for future things was really good point. Um, but this isn't really something that's going to be this huge, hugely impactful piece of legislation. It's just kind of, hey, let's get the the recognition out there. That this is something that we need to be knowledgeable about so that we we understand how the past is affecting the present. Um, and so I think having heard what you said about it, I think what I would want to see with this is just it being like a stepping stone for future legislation. Thank you, Jonathan. And I see that I have over time, so forgive me, but um, so I'll, I'll answer that wrap up and with a conclusion, but the reality is we can't assign um, the outcome totally to this bill because We've never experienced it, right? We can only go by other states that I had pointed out in my Senate speech this week is that states like Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, Texas, um, Virginia have passed this as a Juneteenth holiday. The reality is, is we in the West, the further West became, uh, the more black history we lost and the more of the celebrations that we lost. Back East, this is a no brainer for them. <laughs> They've been celebrating this for centuries. It's now coming online for us. So that having that opportunity for us to engage now on this level. So um, I wouldn't assign uh, uh, to know what the impact might mean. Cause did we know what the impact was gonna mean when we pushed for Martin Luther King's day to be a holiday, right? And the impact that that has had. But if we look back at a lot of the Black African-American activists and advocates, we can see where, where I just picked up the baton, you know, from Huey Newton of the Black Panthers or from Malcolm X and from Martin Luther King and Harriet Tubman and uh, Shirley Chisholm, who is my idol right there, right? So uh, this, this is more about, it should make an extreme big impact because the United States of America, as we witnessed on January 6th, still does not want to accept Black African Americans as whole human beings who are citizens. And so this bill says you must acknowledge that this did happen and that we are apologizing and that we want to move forward whole as being inclusive as we said we're the melting pot of America. Well, let's, this is the time to see if the melting pot is true. So uh, hang in there and let's see what happens in 10 years with this bill, right? With this holiday and what it morphs into. What the beauty of this is we have a blank slate right here in the state of Washington that we get to decide what it's going to be for us. We can say what, how we're going to celebrate this. What are the traditions that we're going to have every year? I used to be on the Martin Luther King Planning Committee celebration for the city of Tacoma uh, for five years. And we set the tone on how that celebration would be. We put food drives on it. Um, it was known as the largest indoor celebration in the nation. So we have a lot of firsts going on in the state of Washington that we should be proud of. As we passed legislation last session with opening up, uh, uh, establishing a state equity office, which that equity office is now, the doors are open. Uh, Monday, those doors open. So we are, we're the first in the nation to have an office like this. We're the only one. So all eyes will be on us. And as we move and hook on Juneteenth and we hook on police accountability, environmental justice and, and housing 
and um, everything and food, the food scarcity and the vaccines and people being uh, get proper uh, uh, equipment to go to work and pay, being paid properly for hazard pay. All of these things are on our minds. And as we move forward and we are um, halfway through our work now, but ensuring that the state of Washington, that our citizens can come out whole, including our students. I'm a big student proponent. I'm a former school board member. Um, and I used to work a lot in the schools in, in establishing policy, but I also had a bill that didn't make it through, House Bill 1067 about establishing a state dinosaur. And that came from my fourth graders who are about to be seventh graders when we finally get it passed now. <laughs> so, so with that said, uh, there's lots of work to be done. I so appreciate you inviting me to this classroom to share what I know and, and thank you for your support in uh, my piece of legislation in making the state of Washington whole and uh, ensuring that we are practicing inclusion. And it's, it's just beautiful to be here with nine other Black African Americans in the legislature to ensure that our voices are at the table. You can, you can bet your bottom dollar that our voices are here now and stay tuned because if we're here, that means lots more things are gonna change and I'm excited. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so thank much, you. Representative Morgan. Yeah. Looking forward thank you to so much for all of you, know, you at the legislature at some point in yeah. time. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Have a great afternoon. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye. So Senator Erickson, I, I know you're familiar with that that my class has done this capital classroom thing every year. We always try to adopt a bill to follow. And um, we've chatted a few times about bills that we were following that you didn't necessarily support or at least raise really good questions for the students to kind of ponder and, and whatever they were going to uh, take as a position. And so um, I've always appreciated that from you. And uh, so anyhow, this, this year we're following the um, bill to make June 19th a state holiday um, to, you know, sort of commemorate in some way the end of slavery and right that wrong, yeah, I, mean, I don't know if it writes the wrong, but it acknowledges the wrong and tries to um, acknowledge that and then maybe do education programs that would be related to it or something like that. Um, and so um, just wondering your your take on, on that or if you would, um, I don't know, or if you wanna take it from there. No, no, you betcha. I'll, I'll take a little bit of it from there. But uh, what, what's our time frame for you guys? I got nothing but time, you know, but what's your what's our time constraint here? We have uh, a half an hour. Okay. Yeah, till 1230. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to treat you guys like the adults that you are and uh, have an honest conversation about the legislation, not treat you like kids and, and bobblehead you. I always say there are legislators that will just bobblehead you. You know, they come in for a meeting and they just shake the head yes and say, you're the great, awesome, wonderful. I'm there. Great stuff. Let's go. But uh, so why don't you guys lobby me? You guys tell me why you want this bill or why you don't want the bill. I don't know if the class all wants it, if you're just following it, if you're advocating for or against. So you guys, uh, you guys sell me on what you're trying to do. Okay. <laughs> we, we have a few that will speak and um, I, I'm going to probably push a couple of you. And I think I'm going to push first for Jonathan to take the lead on that. Sure. Um, so I, I personally support the bill. Um, I think it's just, I think it's really important to acknowledge um, kind of the history of our country and a, a lot of what it was built on. Um, and I think that it's, it's good to try to um, dissuade as much ignorance as possible. So I think like taking a day to um, commemorate, I guess, <laughs> um, just kind of what happened is really important. Yeah. Gotcha. So, so do you see this as, as a, a positive thing of bringing people and state and country together? Or do you see this more of a way to kind of say, let's go look at um, America's evil history and try to atone for it? Or do you say, America is the greatest country in the world. We're the ones that ended slavery and uh, let's celebrate America. 
So, so from your perspective, what, what do you see the point of the day being in terms of how you would anticipate people besides not going to work and hanging out at home? You know, what, what would be the purpose? What would be how you would try to sell it to people in terms of what should happen on that day? Yeah, so I, I would say that what I would hope to see out of it is a bit of like a unification kind of thing, where it's just kind of like understanding each other's backgrounds and what historically is affecting people today helps helps us to kind of come closer as I guess a state in this case. Mm. Get you gotcha. Someone else want to pick it up. Nayla, would you mind? Yeah, so um so I support this bill. Um I would just say um this bill would just help acknowledge the wrongdoing that um, this country, I guess, just did to the black community. And um, I know some people don't, you know, want to talk about it because it's bad history, I guess, you know, it's seen as a bad part, but I think, you know, we have to talk about it and acknowledge it that it is part of this country's uh, history and we can't just pass over it and um i would just uh for this bill just to i like to, i would like like people to take away from this bill um that we have to just talk about it and educate ourselves of the history and um i think it would also just help acknowledge black people that we just understand their history and we um, would like to educate ourselves with it more. So, yeah. so, so quick question for you. So you see it more as a, a looking back in a, at a negative time in America's history and what the day actually celebrates is the end of slavery in America. And America was one of the first countries to lead the effort to end slavery when I mean, we fought a big war over ending slavery, you know, in this country. And one of the issues, you know, you can go back and talk about what the real cause of the uh, Civil War was. And it was one of the issues, definitely. But why not turn it into a day of celebration that America is the best place in the entire world? We, we ended slavery and make it a celebration of America the Great and not a day of trying to feel guilt or shame, but rather to say, no, we're the world leaders. We're the best country in the world. Everybody wants to live in America because we've done great things, like being one of the first major countries to actually end the practice of slavery. Um, yeah, I do think we should celebrate that we, you know, we ended slavery, but I think with the celebration, you also have to acknowledge why we're celebrating it, you know, what the root of it was and why we have to celebrate it at this point. Mm -hmm. And just also for anybody, anybody in the class also, I mean, you guys are all aware, of course, that United States didn't invent slavery, right? I mean, it, it was around long before the United States. It's still around today in many parts of the world, actually. And um, so America is one of the leaders in, in ending it. But at the time, you know, it was basically the way of the world. And America was really the one to lead forward to, to change the way of the world in that capacity. Yeah, I know we didn't start it, but I think we still participated in it. And I just, I think that's total. So I think we still have to acknowledge it. Mm -hmm. So, and for anybody else on the call also, why um, use it on this date? Um, I know that would be geared towards um, Americans that came from Africa during the slave trade, but what about other races and cultures that suffered through a slave trade, whether it be from Southeast Asia, from China, uh, to build the railroads in the United States and, and other types of activities. Aren't you excluding them by doing it just on this day? And white slavery that was brought over also from Europe back in the early days when white people were brought over either as indentured servants or slaves into the United States. That's just, it's, it's more philosophical. Great question. Yeah. Come on, kids. <laughs> Hannah, you want to pipe in on that? Or Brenda or Jonathan, there you go. Um, I, I would argue that. Um, it's not an argument. We're just going back and forth. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think from my perspective, I, I feel like um, with a lot of, or at least some of the other instances of slavery, like, um, I know a lot of people bring up, like when people talk about slavery, you're like, oh, you know, the Irish were slaves. But I think um, probably the slave trade from Africa has had the most lasting social impact in America. Like people are still 
racist towards black people. And I would say that that's um, ultimately drawn from slavery back then. So I feel like it's just a really significant thing to again, just acknowledge. Hmm. No, I, 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 I get you. Good point, you know, and I, I think that, um, you know, I, again, going back to the, the, the issue of racism, and it's an interesting topic, and, and this is a, a, racism is always, you know, the third rail of politics these days, and oftentimes when a person feels they're losing the political argument, they'll claim racism, um, but I'm not saying you're doing that in this particular situation, so don't, don't get me wrong, that's not what I'm saying is happening here, but that's why this topic gets, it gets sensitive in terms of how you handle it, and is it just about Black Americans, is it about Chinese Americans, uh, is it about other types of slavery that's occurred in the country? And um, no, so, I mean, I, I have no problem with the bill. I'd also ask, you know, here's the other question. We already have MLK Day and we already have, you know, Black History Month in, in, in the United States and MLK Day already is a, a paid holiday. So it wouldn't be good to spread it around a little bit and have another holiday for, for not for Africa. And I think MLK is basically associated with Black American history in this country. And MLK Day is about that at the assemblies that you have. So wouldn't that just be wouldn't this just be duplicitous of MLK Day? And maybe we should bring out another holiday. We should look to do something else, or should um, this holiday replace another holiday that's already on the books? We haven't really talked about like the other holidays that the state has. I don't. I'm not sure if I know the the list of them. Yeah, this is, um, there are currently 10. Um, and I think, you know, uh, one of the great things in this process, guys, also, if you, not, you, you go to the bill report and it'll lay out a lot of the stuff. I went to the bill report last night. And the bill report lays out the 10 holidays that currently exist out there, paid holidays. It's like uh, Veterans Day, Fourth of July, Christmas Day. Um, then you have your uh, Memorial Day. Then you have your other holidays, which always occur on a Sunday. So Easter, for example, is always on a Sunday. So it doesn't need to be a a paid state, uh, a state paid holiday type thing, because it always occurs on a certain day. Thanksgiving, you know, being another state holiday that we have out there. Columbus Day used to be Columbus Day. I guess we changed Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. So that's kind of where the example comes of you just want to move this in and make it a combination MLK Day, end of slavery day, kind of like we rolled uh, Washington's birthday into President's Day and how we celebrate all all presidents on the same day and not on their individual birthdays. Just, just those kinds of things also as we take a look at the best way to do it. And then we oftentimes in Washington state also have days that aren't official schools take the day off, but they are still days that we commemorate in Washington state. So there's different levels you have in terms of how you, how you characterize the day. There's a day nobody goes to school, the banks are closed, but everybody else goes to work. So obviously the restaurants and the malls, well, once we get past COVID, all of those things will, will still be open. It's just basically public employees and banks and post offices, right? Well, they're public employees that, um, that don't work on a, uh, on, a, on a state holiday. So saying it could be like just a, a commemoration day where it's actually not a, a paid holiday, but still acknowledged by the state in some fashion. Yeah. Which I think we do to a certain degree now. And I, th I think it's a great day to celebrate. Don't get me wrong. I think it's an awesome day to celebrate. I think it's a great source of pride for America. And it should be celebrated and honored and say, and, and I think in a very positive way about America and moving America forward into the future um, and talking about the great things that, that have been accomplished uh, in this country. So I think it should definitely be celebrated. It's just a question of what level it, it rises to and does it replace another another a um, uh, uh, paid holiday type thing that we have here in the system. And for you guys, you still got to get your 180 days in in a normal year. So it's just an extra day in June going to school for, for high school folks, but uh, or an earlier day in September. Could, could I just ask if, do you feel, or what would you say in response to the concept of if it's a, if it's a day of celebration that it tends to um, water down or demean the, the, evilness of the institution of slavery itself like when we're you know we, we there's a there's a real sense in which celebration tends to be like you know this was good that we did something um and i think the purpose of the day is to acknowledge the the wrong that was done not the the good that was done 
I don't know. I, I think it's. I, I think that uh, the day slavery ended, people weren't mourning. They they were celebrating, you know, and, and they were looking forward to to what could become, you know, in in the country. And so I, I think it's. I, you know, I'm I'm a believer in America. I believe America is the best country in the world. It's the uh, shining beacon on a hill uh, that everybody else in the world wants to move to. And uh, I, I think we should celebrate America. I think if you focus too much on the negatives, and right now we have a lot of folks, I think, both in politics and um, higher education in particular, um, who want to focus on the negatives of America, you know? And if you focus on negatives, you become negative. If you focus on positives, you become positive towards the future. And that's a uniting thing. I mean, everybody can, I mean, I think everybody agrees slavery is horrible, you know? I mean, it's terrible. That's why we got rid of it. No, nobody's advocating for a return to uh, the days of slavery, right? But we are celebrating the fact that we ended it. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's me personally. That's what I would like to do. I'd like to be a celebration of America. Go ahead, Jonathan. Um, I think kind of my thought with it is if we were to celebrate the ending of slavery, it, it would almost be like um, just further pushing this. Um, it's It's kind of just like, looking at history through the lens of like the dominant like white person you know so it's kind of just like oh like go go white people we did it we ended it you know kind of because i feel like um when when if you were to talk about ending slavery most people wouldn't think about black people having done something they'd think about like the white people coming to save the day and ending it and I feel like that's kind of a misrepresentation of how it really was. Like there were lots of people that didn't really even care about ending slavery. They just wanted the South to not split from the union. But then, yeah, well, that, that's a very good point. You know, slavery was one of the issues of the Civil War. It wasn't the only issue of the Civil War. You know, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, my, my ancestors didn't end slavery. They were still in Norway. You know, they, they didn't come over till about, uh, you know, 1908. So it's not like uh, we were participants in that, either on the slave side or on the freeing slave side, right? We're, we're new to America, um, newer to America. But I hear what you're saying, and, and I would tend to disagree. Um, uh, I don't view it through a white dominance view of American uh, history, which I know is a popular one, and we're seeing it in Olympia right now, um, very strongly being pushed uh, on that agenda front. And uh, I don't think it's helpful for the country. I think it's helpful for the country to be able to unite, to celebrate the great things about the country, you know, to recognize that, you know, obviously we all say no place is perfect, but America is more perfect than other places. Our constitution is more perfect than other constitutions, you know, um, other parts of the other parts of the world try to copy our constitution and put it into place in their country. You know, we, we are the, the, the beacon of representative democracy in the world. And I think we should celebrate it. Um, so that's why I say, no, I, I, I I would tend to disagree with you. I don't think having a celebration of the end of slavery is the meaning towards anybody. I think it's a celebration of all in, in terms of what was accomplished, so. Go ahead, Nayla. Um, I, I guess what I'm taking away is that your point is we should just view everything in a positive way, you know, the accomplishments this country has done. But I don't think we can put uh, just, you know, our positive um, I like to say glasses on. We can't just wear our positive glasses on all the time because there still is racism and there's still inequality and there's still discrimination. And when we put on just a positive point of view, I think we're just being blind to all the negative stuff that's going on right now. So I don't think we can just have a positive point of view on everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm not asking you to have a positive point of view on everything, I guess. There are bad things. There, there is evil in the world, and we have to uh, accept that there is evil in the world. But uh, if we spend every day dwelling on the evil, um, I would rather spend every day dwelling on the good and ways we can fight the evil. And, and it's how you spin it. So, I, I mean, I, I, so I'm, I'm a believer, like I say, in America and celebrating our history and celebrating the great things we've got accomplished in this country. You know, so... That, that's where I come down on it. So I think, you know, whether it's a state holiday or whether it's just an, uh, a day that we celebrate in Washington state, we'll, we'll figure that one out. But, uh, you know, if it's, if it's intended to be a day of remorse and regret and, and um, self-flagellation and, and we're terrible as a country, I don't think that's healthy 
you know, for, for, for America. You know, we can obviously recognize that we've done great things to change the world. You know, it's when we, when we look back at things like uh, uh, liberating the world from Nazism and, and from uh, uh, the Japanese uh, imperialism, right? We, we celebrate that as a victory, but we all know that during the course of that war, bad things happen. And we don't dwell on every single bad thing that happened, but we dwell on the fact that we won and we did great things for the world, you know? And that's, that's how we can look at these things. And there's lots of stuff that we could look at also. Um, you know, I think that this class should go and take a look at what happened during the, the, the Great Society under Lyndon Baines Johnson and what that did to um, uh, the black culture in, in America and, and, and in, in this country. You know, and so I think it shouldn't just be going back to pre-slavery days and saying, you know, America's evil. I think you can look at what happened to say America fought a great war. We ended slavery. We're a world leader. Let's celebrate that. And uh, I think that would be a great thing to celebrate and to bring people together. And there are plenty of slaves, African-Americans that fought in the Civil War that can be celebrated and how we ended slavery. You know, there, there are great things that have been accomplished. You know, I think that the Civil Rights Act, I think not Civil Rights Act, Civil Rights Act is a good thing. The Great Society under Lyndon Baines Johnson was a big backward step for America. And that's why I think we should go take a look at that also and understand that in terms of our history and culture. But uh, uh, ending slavery, I think, is a positive for our country. I, I think the day should be celebrated as positive. I wanted to note, too, um, after watching a lot of the testimony and the number of public hearings and floor debates that it's had on the legislation's had, I learned a lot about the day itself and what it means to the Black community. Because as a white female, I know about it, but I don't know that, you know, the, the true meaning that it is that means to um, their culture. And I've learned a lot about that and that it, it does seem like there are different levels of, you know, some families celebrate it every year. I think there was a legislator that said they don't actually celebrate like the 4th of July, they celebrate Juneteenth and that's kind of their family tradition. And then there's others that um, they do mourn the, the loss and the lives that have, were impacted and the, and the longstanding effects that it's had on their culture and their community. So I almost wonder if it's not necessarily this, how do we celebrate it, but it, it could be a day of remembrance that's different for that, you know, their culture. And, you know, it, it's hard to say what will occur if this goes into um, effect and becomes a state holiday or, or any level of holiday, but that maybe it means something different to everybody. Just a thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not to try to tell people how they have to think or, or how they have to celebrate anything in, in this great free country that we live in. It's up to them to make that determination, you know? And I'm just sharing my view in terms of it, it's a unifier. And I think you need to unify a country. I don't think you should be dividing the country up. And I would hate to say this become a, a competitor, you know, to the 4th of July. We, we don't need two national anthems. We don't need two 4th of Julys. We need to be America. We need to be Americans. And we need to come together as America if we're going to survive in this world. Because the other thing, you know, America is the shining beacon on the hill. We're like the we're like Tom Brady. We're we're like the we're like the Patriots. Everybody wants to take us out. So you have a lot of countries who who are targeting America, and and the more divided we become, the weaker we become, and it makes it other easier for other countries like China or Russia or other places to be able to infiltrate the United States. And so we need to be a strong country. You know, I think that. Uh, you folks, you know, in this class, you want to grow up in a strong America. You, you don't want to grow up in a, a weak, fragmented, balkanized, socialist America looking, looking more like Venezuela uh, or, or Chile back in the, you know, 1960s, you know? <laughs> so that, that's my concern about how you celebrate holidays in general, but it should be to bring the country together. Uh, particularly if you have one that's statewide and mandated, it should be a unifying event and not one geared towards a dividing up you know, the state and the population. Kenley, did you have your hand up? I guess I just had a quick question of like, so in the celebration of the bill or what it means, I guess to you, what would be like the ideal day or like what would be the things like if it was not um, a state holiday and you didn't get school off and stuff like that, I guess would there be like, would there be something brought up in schools or would there be like social media accounts or posts or like, I guess what to you, how would it be celebrated and how would 
it be remembered, I guess. Well, that, that's up to the public to make that determination, right? If people want to post, if people want to have gatherings and celebrations, you know, normally on other days that are symbolic in our, in our state, but aren't paid state holidays, there'll be proclamations that are released. There'll be speeches that are given by the elected officials. The governor will send out a proclamation, hold a reception, do different things, you know, on that particular day. Then it's up to the individual school districts. I'm a big believer in decentralized control of schools. I don't believe in mandates out of Olympia on how our how you guys are educated, that should be a local decision. So if the Meridian School District says they wanna have a, uh, an assembly and have a focus on it on that day because you are in school, you know, that's great. If, if a school district decides they don't want to do that, it's up to the individual school district to do things in different ways and up to individuals to make those determinations for themselves also. Just like on the 4th of July, we don't require everybody to go to a parade in Blaine and, and, and you know, watch the fireworks and eat a hot dog. You know, it's up to people to decide how they're gonna celebrate that. And, same thing with Memorial Day. You know, Memorial Day um, is a day, you know, when we honor soldiers who have passed away. And many people use it for a, a four-day weekend, you know, to go out and go to the lake, which is a great thing. Some people choose to go to the cemetery, you know, and put a flag up, you know. That, that's what people do, and it's up to them to make those individual choices. We only have a few minutes left. Is there another question for the senator? I was just 30 minutes of my day right here. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's been the highlight so far. I really appreciate the uh, the conversation, the back and forth. Yeah. Could 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 you give them like a, a brief view in the sense of how you perceive the difference between the Republican Democratic Party here in our state? <laughs> Uh, you have uh, one minute. My, my fundamental view, and I think this is being uh, shown out this year. So as a Republican, I believe that all money belongs to the people and the government should take as little as possible to run an efficient and effective government. My, my good friends across the aisle on the Democrat side tend to believe that all money belongs to the government and they try to choose how much you can keep for yourself. So to me, that would be the fundamental difference. Uh, so in Olympia this year, we're seeing things like income taxes, capital gains taxes, carbon taxes, cap and trade taxes, different types of things where they make a determination on how much you get to keep and how much the government needs. Um, I, be, I believe it's how little should the government take from the individual person of their property, from their sweat and toil and efforts and uh, still be able to have a government. I'm not a libertarian, I'm a Republican. Um, so I still believe there's a role for government. We need to do roads and schools and fun things and give people choice on how they live their lives. But I think that's the fundamental difference right now, um, I think, between Republicans and Democrats. And so that, that's the key, one of the key issues. And I think you will have to say, my, my other view is that um, I've been elected to office for 22 years. I've been a Republican the whole time. And I've been, I, I would consider myself a, a, a moderately conservative on most issues. You know, I have crossover issues and we could talk about those, but I, I do think the Democrat party has moved progressively to the left over the past eight years and become much more liberal with, with open talk these days about income taxes and massive tax increases that you, that you wouldn't have seen um, eight years ago out of the Democrat party or 10 years ago. So I think in Washington state, they're taking a big leftward tilt. And I think that um, um, that's another big difference is that gap widens it says the progressive wing in the Democrat party takes over the, the, the control in the legislature. So that's my take on the difference between the two parties. I got lots more, but that was the best I had for 90 seconds. I don't uh, know. That was great. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. <laughs> well, um, when we uh, finish our class, uh, and we, we have uh, this just is here ending today, but we, we still have the class going on for another couple of months. And so um, if, Hopefully, it would be great if we could do another session of some sort another time. Um, just always appreciate hearing your views and challenging the students to kind of think for themselves. So, yeah, love that. Anytime, you know, that, that's the, the one good thing about the Zoom garbage. It does make it a bit easier, you know, to, uh, to do this. I always prefer coming into class also. So, if we get yeah. to the point where it's, it's a one and a half foot rule instead of a six foot rule or a three foot rule and <laughs> we could actually gather as a, a group. I'd be happy to come and visit the classroom also and uh, be able to see you guys face to face and meet with you. I'll just say, you know, advocate strong for your positions. You know, that's the most important thing you can do. And I appreciate your pushback in me in terms of how I understand that holiday and how you would understand that holiday. And that's the important part about communication and to respect each other's views and say, I get what you're saying. And I appreciate it. And, and I, I totally know what you mean. And hopefully I communicate a couple ideas to you today. You can say, you know what? I don't fully agree with you, Senator Erickson, on what you said, but I can understand where you're coming from. 
And I think you guys have your heart in the perfectly right place and trying to do great things for America. And I think I'm trying to do great things for America too. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, keep fighting, keep standing up for what you believe in. Uh, that's what America is all about. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thanks. You bet. Right. Take care, guys. Take care.